everybody. Um, I'm here again, back to you with Oracle FFC ASM New Futures with practical demonstration session. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Kamran Agayev from Azerbaijan. Uh, my country locates at Eastern Europe and is uh, bounded by the Caspian Sea and Russia and Iran and Turkey. Um, I, I work as a Davis team manager at Azusa Telecom and I'm Oracle uh, certified master and Oracle ACE director. Uh, I also authored two books. The first one is, was about armament backup and recovery and second it was uh, about the preparation guide for Oracle certified master exam. Uh, I'm also blogging at karmanagaev.com and I'm president of Azerbaijan Oracle user group. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, if you if you are Oracle certified <clears throat> professional, the next step is to become an Oracle certified master. And uh, up to last year, there was no any study guide for OCM preparation. And I, I published this book last year, and uh, I got I got a lot of feedbacks from 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 those who passed the exam successfully by using my my study guide. So if you want to go to OCM exam, this book is for you, and you can get your free trial. Um, PDF book uh, that contains few chapters of this book from ocmguide.com. Um, I've been blogging for more than 10 years and what, I, what I've seen and what I've realized that it's better to uh, uh, it's better to share your experience with uh, with screenshots rather than just a, just a, just a blog post contains some code and text and it's better to share your experience and knowledge with tutorials rather than uh, rather than uh, the blog post that contained a lot of screenshots. So I created a new video portal, which is oraclevideotutorials.com, um, that contains a lot of video tutorials, and I tried to find some time to uh, work on this, uh, on this, on this web page and to create a lot of video tutorials for you guys in order to make you uh, learn uh, Oracle uh, much, in a way, much uh, easier for you guys. Okay. Uh, whatever I present, uh, I, I I I mostly ask uh, some some questions from the from the room. But as we don't have room now, uh, I I really interested how many of the users use an ASM and how many of you are on the production database on Oracle Twelve C, and how many of you have used any of Oracle Twelve C ASM related new features. Actually, Oracle ASM was first released with Oracle 10 G, and where it provided a significant simplification for the file system. It also provided a file system uh, scalability and performance and database availability. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, with ASM, um, less effort is required for managed database storage environment, and there are a lot of tools that you can manage the ASM, like SQL Plus or Enterprise Manager or Cloud Control or ASM CMD. Um, moreover, ASM provides the best performance using its rebalance feature, and ASM distributes data evenly across all storage resources after the storage configuration changes and provides optimal performance. Uh, it has own automatic mirror re reconstruction and resynchronization, rolling upgrades and patch fun functionalities, and etc. So, and Oracle Twelve C introduced a lot of new features for ASM, and in this session, I will talk about some most useful ASM new features uh, of uh, Oracle Twelve C. So um, first of all, we will talk about the Flex ASM, uh, which is which is uh, which is fundamentally changed. Where the Oracle changed the, the ASM fundamental, I mean structure of ASM, um, by, by where you can run only a small number of ASM instances in the entire cluster. Uh, then we'll talk about the interconnect ASM interconnect, which is dedicated to private network for for just ASM network traffic. Uh, and there are a lot of ASM disk and disk group related new features such as failure group prepare time where um, you can use a new disk group attribute to ensure that all the disks are not dropped automatically during a short term outage. Uh, or fast disk resync feature is used to provide power limit while onlining a disk. Or and, um, and we'll talk about the new replace command can, that can be used to replace the disk uh, with, with, with a new one uh, instead of just, just uh, instead of adding or removing a lot of this and making the whole, uh, invoking the whole disk group rebalance. Uh, then a new command called scrub in 12C can be used to repair the logical corruption of the disk by reading the data from the mirror copies. 
And as in Oracle FC, um, the database and ASM instance can be run on different nodes. An ASM instance requires a password file that is used to authenticate databases is connected to an ASM instance in the cluster. Okay, so let's get started with Oracle Flex ASM. Um, the prior to Oracle FC, if there were a number of nodes, each node were having both database and ASM instance processes running in the background. And each RDBMS instance were highly depending on ASM instance running on the same node. And if ASM instance fails, the RDBMS instance fail as well. Well, it was failing as well, I mean, prior to Oracle TLC. To solve this problem, Oracle TLC introduced a new feature, which is called the Flex ASM, where each RDBMS instance on each node can connect to any ASM instance across the cluster. During the grand infrastructure installation, you are asked to provide a storage, um, a storage for the OCR. And if you check the second option, Flex ASM module will be available. So after the installation, uh, if you want to check the status of the ASM Flex cluster, run uh, ASM CMD show cluster mod command to display the current mode of uh, the Oracle ASM cluster. And to get the list of nodes where ASM instance is running, run uh, server control status ASM uh, with a detailed parameter. If you want to know the number of nodes where ASM instances are running, which is called also an ASM cardinality, uh, run server control config ASM command, and you will see that the ASM cardinality for this cluster is free. It means that the, in the entire cluster, we can run free ASM instances. <clears throat> so to specify the number of ASM instances uh, or to change the, the cardinality, uh, you can run server control modify ASM and provide the new cardinality number. So if you want to, to set it to two, run server control modify SM count two and one of the SM instances will be shut down automatically. Um, so to increase the count of ASM instance across the cluster again, start the SM instance manually. And if you try to start the instance, the third SM instance where the cardinality is set to two, you will fail, okay? So you have to change the cardinality you have to increase the cardinality from two to three and then uh, start the ASM instance on that node. So now I'd like to show you a video tutorial on how FlexSM works actually, but before getting into it, let's see some slides and explain the process in detail. So imagine that we have three nodes, um, three node cluster, and each node has its own uh, database and ASM instance running. So, and I want to have only two ASM instances in the, in the entire cluster. And so I set the ASM cardinality to two and one ASM instances, one of the ASM instances will shut down. So Oracle decides to shut down uh, the instance three. And at that point, <clears throat> uh, you, uh, the database instance will be, uh, will be connected to any available ASM instance in the entire cluster. So in this case, the database instance is connected to the second ASM instance, okay, that's running on a second node. Um, if, you, if you run the server control status ASM command with a detailed parameter, we'll see that there are only two ASM instances running in the entire cluster. So next, uh, uh, ASM log file, we'll see, um, we will see that the ASM instance of the third node um, was shut down and the database instance is connected to the ASM instance of the second node, right? And if you, if you query gv.asm client view, you can see that the third database instance is connected to the second ASM instance in this case. Here it is. Uh, next, we, uh, uh, we, we set the ASM coordinator to one and Oracle will shut down uh, the second ASM instance in the cluster. In this case, we'll to shut down the first ASM instance that's running on the first node. Now the database instance that's running on a first node will be reconnected to the ASM instance without any downtime and failure. It also can be seen from, from, the, from the alert log file. And if you, if you query your or ASM client view, you will see that the, rack DB, that the first database instance is also connected to the second ASM instance. So in this case, we have only one ASM instance running in an entire cluster and all database instances are up and running on their uh, own uh, node and all of them are connected to the, to the second ASM instance.
So if you decide to increase the SM cardinality, the database instance will not be relocated to its own ASM instance and it must be relocated manually by alter system relocate uh, client command. And run this command and check the GV or SM client to make sure that the first instance is relocated to the first ASM instance. If one of the ASM instances was shut down abnormally, the database instance will connect to available ASM instance on the remote node. Uh, after a while, the failed ASM instance will be started automatically. So if you try to kill it, it will uh, abnormally shut down and it will start over again. Okay, let me let me show you how it works in, in the real environment. I have a video tutorial for you guys. There it is. You can see the screen. Uh, so uh, here I run ASM CMD show cluster mode in order to to see if the flex mode is enabled, and I um, get the uh, get a list of the ASM instances running in the entire cluster. So I have three nodes, right, and I have three ASM instances running in each nodes, and the ASM cardinality is set to three. And I check and I query GVDOR ASM client view, and I see that all instances are. Is, uh, each instance connect, each database instance is connected to it, its own ASM instance here. Okay. Now I set a cardinality from 32 and one of the ASM instances will go down. It's ASM instance one. So we'll shut down. Okay, the ASM instance is gone. And the database instance is connected to, to the second ASM instance without any downtime. And here you see. So the first instance is connected to the second ASM instance. And I check, I check the S1, uh, S1. Uh, background process for the ASM, and I don't see an ASM process, so there's no ASM in the first node, but there is a database instance in the first node. So next, I I modify the cardinality and set it to one, and the ASM instance two is, well, uh, went down. I think it's two, right, or three, okay, three. The third ASM instance went down, and all database instances will be up and running, and all of them will be connected to the third ASM instance. If I check the status of the database instances, all of them are up and running. But behind the scenes, all of them are connected to only one available ASM instance, which is running on on the second node. If I try to if I try to stop the ASM instance on the first node, it should fail, because the cardinality set was was set to one, and I want to start the second ASM instance. It it's gonna fail as well. So in this case, I have to increase the cardinality from one to two and start the ASM instance. Check the status. Now I have two ASM instances in the cluster. And the, the database instance was not reconnected to its own ASM instance. I think this behavior was changed from uh, from Oracle 12.2, but in 12.1 you have to uh, re, you have to reconnect the ASM instance to its own. Uh, you have to reconnect the database instance to its own ASM instance. So in this case, I try to relocate it to its own ASM instance. And I query GVDOR ASM client view again. And here you see that now it's, it, it used its own ASM instance that is running on the same node. Now I'm not able to start the third ASM instance because I have to modify the cardinality to three and start it again.
Okay. Now you see that I have uh, the SMS is up and running, and I relocate the database instance to, 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 it, to use its own SM instance. And if I query GVD or SM client view, I, I will see that uh, each database instance uses its own SM instance. And here it is. And it will, if I will try to kill the SM instance, if I shut down abnormally and the cluster will, will start it up again. This is terminated. And it is reconnected to any SM instance in the cluster. Okay, got it. And it is started started uh, by the cluster by the cluster where. And in this case, again, you have to relocate it. And you have to relocate the DDP instance to use its own uh, ASM instance. So I relocate it again and and query GVDL ASM client view. And I see that it is relocated. Okay, got it. Okay, next ASM interconnect. Uh, ASM is just running on the uh, on the on on the nodes of the cluster have to communicate among uh, themselves to transfer the ASM metadata. So starting from Oracle 12C, you can use dedicated private network uh, for ASM network traffic. The traffic on the ASM network is usually not over, overly significant, and most of the metadata, such as particular files, extend information, extend map, is uh, relocated, uh, is transferred. So if it is at the Oracle cluster where private network can be shared with ASM and dedicated ASM network is not required most of, most of the time. <coughs> So, um, starting from Oracle 12C, any database instance might connect to any ASM instance on a different node. For this, we have we have ASM password file that is used by DB instance to connect to remove the ASM instance. So, ASM is, the, the ASM password file is kept in an ASM disk group and is available for all nodes. If you want to change the ASM password, use Oracle PVD utility. To get the password location, you can use, you can run PW catch command of ASM CMD tool. The Oracle PVD utility now accepts a disk group as a location for the password file. You can use Oracle PVD and provide this group name and it will be created in that disk group. So um, you can also connect any SM instance from any node in the cluster using the password file. So if you are not able to log into that, uh, to that, data, to that node, um, uh, because of any reason, you can you can still connect to its to the ASM instance running on that node from, from from any node, right? So with regarding the ASM password file feature, there are some new ASM CMD commands uh, that were introduced with Oracle uh, 12C. So uh, using PW copy, you can copy password file to specified specified location, or you can create a password file. You can delete the password file. You can get the location of the password file, move it. You can set a new location for the password file in as well. And to get more detailed information on specific command and how to use that command, run help and provide the command, and it will also provide you with a detailed information and with the example as well. So if the same password file is not available, then the cluster will not come up. And you will get error like error while accessing the physical storage and invalid username and password. So uh, you have to, if you if you don't have the password file, back of the password file, you have to deconfigure and reconfigure the cluster where. So, uh, so you can get the location of the password file and copy the password file as a backup and then you know, to restore it in the future. And there's more detailed information that I mentioned at the link note on how to uh, restore, the, how to back up the password file and how to restore it during a failure. Okay, uh, whenever we created this group, we provide a path to the physical disk and internally Oracle assigns a name to the disk, right? So normally we don't need to worry about the disk name, but sometimes when you have a bunch of ASM disks and you want to replace a specific uh, disk, you might worry about the name of the disk. So for example, we created this group and um, we, pro we, we, we created this group and when you query with our SM disk view, we'll see that our Oracle automatically assigned a new disk name to the disk. 
uh, internally. But starting from Oracle 12 say you can rename ASM disk by using the rename command. So run alter disk group. You, um, in, in this case, you have to dismount the disk group. So uh, dismount it, mount it in a restricted mode, and run alter disk group. Uh, provide a disk group name, rename this command, and rename the disk. Then create your SM disk view, and you'll see that your name of your disk are renamed. Um, one of the biggest advantages of or using ASM is the ability to replace disks online, right? So before our code 12C, we had two options. The first option was to drop the disk and then add the new one. And the second option was doing the same action in the one command, uh, add and drop, right? So when a disk is dropped, the disk group is rebalanced by moving all the file extents from the dropped disk to other disk in the disk group. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> a drop disk operation might fail if not enough space is available uh, on the other disks. The best approach is to perform both the, uh, the add and drop operations with the same altered disk group statement command. But in this process, the entire disk group will be rebalanced. So with Oracle 12C, you can use replace this command. It's just a new command. And the replacement disk is populated with mirror copies of the ASM extents from, from the other disks. And there is no need for an additional reorganization and or rebalancing across the rest of the unaffected uh, disk group. So, uh, so here we add a new disk uh, to the disk group, and I mean this, this is a, this is the first the first option: add a new disk and drop and drop the drop the previous disk. And you can do it in a single command, which is which was <coughs> which is the best option, <coughs> which is better than the first one, and provide a rebalance for 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 the both process. Or you can run alter disk group replace this command and uh, replace just two disks and not perform uh, in this case the whole disk group rebalance will not be performed uh, i mean before code fc it was not possible to guess the time that will take to the disk replacement um same from work code fc we can get the estimated time by running explain word command and get the output from the Vidor estimate, Vidor ASM estimate view. So in this case, we want to add a new disk to our to the disk group, and we don't have any plan how how much it's gonna take uh, for this process. So we we run explain work for command and provide the command that we are planning to run, and then we query Vidor ASM estimate view, and it will provide uh, with a number of <coughs> allocation units that will be uh, used for this operation. Uh, so this, it will give you an idea about the time and helps you to set the appropriate power limit. So um, when using actual normal or higher redundancy disk groups, um, the allocation units are mirrored between failure groups. This is a normal behavior. When a disk temporarily offline in a normal or higher redundancy disk group, it needs to be re replicated back from the surviving disks. This is called disk resync. Uh, so from Oracle to FC, you can specify a power limit while onlining, onlining a disk. And the whole plus process is restartable. So SM uses a checkpoint to store the last point of resync and restart it from there. Um, failure group repair time. So uh, if a disk is offline by Oracle SM because of an input output error or is explicitly offline by uh, using the alpha disk group offline statement without the drop after clause, uh, then the value specified for the disk repair time attribute for the disk group is used and the disk will be, will be dropped. Um, but what happens if the whole failure group fails? Not due to, the, due to the corruption, but because of the storage outage or any hardware issues. In this case, Starting from Oracle 12 c a new attribute which is called failure group repair time parameter is used. Uh, this attribute specifies a default repair time for the failure group, failure groups in the disk group. So the failure group repair time is is used. I mean, if Oracle SM determines that the entire failure group has failed, and the default value is 24 hours. So to show how it works, we create a new uh, disk group uh, in a normal redundancy with two failure groups. And 
I mean, we, we set the attribute, we set the disk repair time attribute to one minute. And then we, we just offline that, that disk. And we, after a few seconds, we will see in the ASMR log file that this one in group two will be dropped in 60 seconds, which is one minute. It's because of this repair time attribute. And after one minute, we will get the happy message that the disk was dropped. We didn't drop it, we just offline it, but Oracle drops it, okay? After, after a few seconds uh, or a few minutes. Um, but uh, we, we can actually in, in ASM, we have, to, we have two repair time uh, attributes, disk repair time and fail group repair time. So disk repair time, default disk repair time uh, value uh, is 3.6 hours, but fail group repair time uh, value, I mean, uh, is 24 hours. So, um, the next, uh, the next uh, feature is uh, the ASM, the ASM disk scrubbing. So, in a normal hybrid analysis disk scrub, a copy of each allocation unit resides um, on a different, on a different failure group. So, um, if any if there is any corruption is detected, the database automatically recovers by reading the mirrored copy of the data uh, from, from a different failure group. So uh, now I will show you the video tutorial about about this feature. Uh, but before moving to the before moving to, to the video tutorial, I would like to show you how some slides on explaining the whole scenario. <clears throat> so uh, to create a test environment, uh, we create a disk group with normal redundancy, and as a test case, we'll corrupt one of the disks and see how the corrupted data is recorded automatically. Sorry. Oh. Okay, um, so uh, we create we create a new new disk group in normal redundancy with two disk two failure groups, and we create a table space uh, on that disk group. We create a new table uh, on that table space. Insert a, insert a one one row and uh, commit the transaction. Flush the buffer cache and query the table. So the table is there. Uh, next, we'll extract the block number. I mean, we, 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 uh, what we are going to do is we want to corrupt that block in the ASM disk. Um, so if, what is, uh, we have to get the block number. So we'll extract the block number from the row ID. To get the block number of the table, you, you, we can use UTL encode uh, package with base uh, base uh, 63 code command to read the row ID and find the exact block number. So uh, in this case, uh, the row uh, that we are interested in locates at block number 135. But this is not a file system, right? This is an ASM and the block resides on an allocation unit. Uh, so uh, to find a specific allocation unit, we need to do a little math. So the block is 135, and we also know that the size of each allocation unit is one megabyte. And if we divide it to the value of the block size, which is eight kilobytes, we'll get the number of the blocks in each allocation unit, and each, uh, in each allocation unit, which is 128. And if we subtract it from, from the block number, from the original block number, we'll get seven. It means that the block that we need locates on the seventh block of the second allocation unit. Uh, because it's more than 125 to 28, which is the first allocation unit. So now we need to find the exact allocation unit number. Uh, for this, we have to query video RSM file view to get the file ID. So uh, the group number is two, it is uh, the disk group number, and the file number is 256. And we'll use this file number uh, to get the allocation unit number from the XDOR key FFXP view or table, internal table. And it will provide uh, the list of allocation unit files for that specific uh, file, for that specific uh, file, right? And this is, uh, this is the list of the allocation units. So uh, the, the second column provides uh, the, the allocation unit uh, the allocation unit numbers, and we need the second allocation unit, which is 50, 53, right? 
So uh, now we will jump to the uh, to that allocation unit, and we'll try to find out uh, the death row in order to corrupt it and see how 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 the ASM will will recover it. So we can use the strings command to make sure that the data we need to corrupt locates on the both disks, right? To extract the allocation unit that I need, I use the TD command and provide allocation unit size as one megabyte, and we'll get one allocation unit and provide the allocation unit number. So it is a disk. I use the strings command and I make sure that my my um, data is there, my row is there. Next, I use the DD command and provide the provide the the allocation unit uh, to count one and provide the size of the allocation unit, which is one megabyte, and skip to the uh, 53rd allocation unit and dump it. And then I use strings, strings command, uh, the query, I mean, against the, against the, that dump file, against the, this file, and grip my test, grip that row ID, and I see that it is there. So we are, we are on the right track, right? Next, now from the whole allocation unit, I extract only one block that I need. And uh, again, I use a DD command and I provide this file, which is one megabyte, and I get only uh, one block, which is eight kilobyte, one block, which is eight kilobyte, skip to the seventh block and dump the output and use the strings command to see if my data is there. Oh, that's perfect, my data is there. So now we can we can proceed. So, so here, here is what we have so far. So the data block size is eight kilobyte and the ASM disk is disk five. The ASM file number is 256. It's, a, it's, a, it's an internal number that is provided by, by, by the ASM. The allocation unit size is one megabyte and the data block number is 135. It is the seventh block of the second allocation unit and the allocation unit number is 53. So if we multiply 53 with the count of allocation, uh, allocation unit, count of the data blocks in one allocation unit and add, uh, the, the, add the data block offset, which is seven, we will get uh, we'll get the the block number on the ASM file system level. So it's six seven nine one. Okay, now uh, now we dump that file, which is uh, I mean dump the disk, not the file, but dump the disk. Get only one block, which is eight kilobyte. Skip to the uh, to the block number where my raw ID resides, where my data resides, and dump that information. I will see that my test is coming uh, as an output. So it is the block that I want to corrupt. So I will use OD uh, in order to get to dump a specific block uh, in more detail. So I'll see that my block is, my, my row is in this block. Okay, so attention, please don't try it on your production environment, okay? Um, so I run the command against, uh, against the, 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 this, this disk, and as an input, I provide dev zero, so, and I corrupt it, so it is null. And I that I get this message when I query the table, right? Uh, and I flush the buffer cache, and I put kind of my head and cool the table. Oh, it's there. It is corrupted, but it's there. So how it happened? I check the log file and I see that the, the Oracle finds a corrupted block reading the file. So this block is corrupted and read the mirrored copy and repaired the corruption. So this is how ASM works. And it, it recovered the corruption. So, uh, you can, you can, it is automatic, it is normal behavior, it's an automatic behavior, but you can do it, uh, you can do it manually as well. So uh, you run, uh, again, we, let's, let's run a DD command and get the output of that block and we see that the row is there. So um, 
we, we can we can use uh, in Oracle TLC we can use a new command which is called scrub uh, to weed out the logical corruption. This command repairs the logical corruption by reading the data from the mirrored copies. Uh, Power Max consumes most resources to complete the operation faster, but may affect other operations in the system. Power Auto lets us choose the best power value depending on the system resource availability, and it is it should be uh, the default value. We can use we can scrub a single disk or a specific data file as well. Okay, guys, uh, that's all uh, for today regarding Oracle 12 CA new features. Uh, and let me know if you have any questions. Uh, Francisco? Excuse me.